Wax Mannequin is the name under which Chris Adeny performs around the world. Based in Hamilton, Ontario, Adeny has made a name for Wax Mannequin as both a clever rocker and also a clever folk rocker, releasing seven full-length albums this century and touring extensively throughout Canada and Europe. His latest record is a beautifully haunting affair called Have a New Name, which is out now via Coax Records, and it prompted Chris and I to meet at Granddad's Donuts in Hamilton to discuss things like Donuts and Hamilton, the time in 2010 when he and I and Matthias Calm of the Burning Hell did an extensive Western Canadian tour together in a 1992 Honda Accord. His origin story, his new album, Have a New Name, and The Sport of Basketball, his future plans, and much more. With the support of listeners like you who subscribe to this podcast and spread the word about it and make flexible monthly pledges at patreon.com slash creative control, plus in-kind support from Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf and Planet Bean Coffee in Guelph, and Granddad's Donuts in Hamilton, this is the 438th episode of Creative Control featuring the mysteriously smart and talented Wax Mannequin with your host, me, Vish Khanna. Chris, thank you for being on my show. Thanks, Vish. I might for, say. Thanks for asking me. No, of course. It's been uh, too long, and we're at uh, one of my favorite places and a, a sponsor of my show, Granddad's Donuts. Granddad's Donuts. They're a sponsor? They, they are. Great. They give me donuts in exchange for mentioning their establishment. You're just telling me how I should come here, here more often. Well, you, you don't come here very often at all. Well, that could change. I mean, what do you make of that? We both have chocolate peanut covered what yeah that's yeah right. i was eyeing it and then you ordered one mm-hmm. and i felt almost weird about ordering the same one but i'm glad i did were you ever a donut person when you were growing up you know i have I kind of have a yearly donut ritual i eat a donut a year one a year maybe two three but this explains it, it's why been you're a so binge. fit it's been a binge lately so i i, I you know i i work occasionally in education and yeah there's a lot of donuts are there yeah. I thought it was just cops. It's one of the perks. Cops and teachers like donuts? Yeah. Well, the reason I like this place is that it reminds me of the way donuts used to be when we were younger. Right. They were the size of footballs. They tasted real. They didn't taste like they came out of an assembly line. They're just the most delectable donut, and I, I just can't get enough. of them. In fact, I ordered a second chocolate peanut-covered donut just to match you. I'd does, already started one before you arrived. Does bring back uh, nostalgia for old Tim's. You know what I have in this box? The golden years. Walnut crunches and orange twists. Right. Um, orange twists. Okay, that's a thing. If you want one, let me know. I was yeah. going to bring them back to my family because they love them so much. What about the honey stick? They, they, used, make to, honey they stick? used to have the honey stick with the honey stick. I don't know if they make a honey stick. They make it. They made a version of the honey stick called like the cherry stick. Mm-hmm. It was like occasionally here. And it used to, the honey stick, my friend used to make fun of me. I used to think it did something to my nasal cavity. It like had a <laughs> negative impact on me. Like I, there was like an allergic reaction to the honey stick. Whoa! They stopped making them at Tim Hortons. It's a strong stick. If I might stick. mention that, yeah, maybe that's why people complain. People complain that it had some sort of allergen in it. What? They just totally stopped making it. It's one. It's rare for a. Yeah, I haven't seen them in ages. No. I used to get them. Maybe there was some, some sort of like, coca leaf. Yeah. Extract that they used but made they, them a bit addictive. They also stopped making the orange twist. An allergen. 
All the best okay. donuts stopped, I thought. And then they, the ones that we used to like, the walnut. You ever look walnut at a crunch? You yeah. ever look at a modern day walnut crunch at that place? <laughs> no walnuts. Do they, there's no can walnuts. They, can they even call it a walnut? No, there's no, no walnuts. <laughs> there's nothing. And uh, yeah. let me just show you this for a second. I don't want. I want to keep these fresh for my family. Look at this, Chris. Look at the size of that donut. Yeah. It's the size of a football, a small football. They look uh, very rich. Yeah, I can't even open this box. Decadent. They, they are. Yeah. It, is a, it is a guilty pleasure of mine. I don't get to Hamilton too often. Good. So when I do uh, get, come here, I try to get the granddad's donuts. Their granddad's donuts, yeah. okay. Anyway, that's yeah. enough about the donuts. It's just, it's not, and I haven't done a remote well, restaurant I've, sort of uh, show in a while. I've been to other places in town. Not to, I mean, we're obviously at the uh, the favorite. No, but, no, it's not. It's not. I like other. I places can mention in other donut places. Of course places. you can. <laughs> okay. Of course you can. Well, how, other donut places. I don't know how tight the contract well, is. Well, I don't know. It's not, what, <laughs> other other good donut places. Well, I, you know, donut monsters kind of got been. They've been doing well. Isn't there a lot of competition among the donut people now in this city? Because yeah, it's 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 kind of a, a hip uh, product. Why is that? But, uh, what happened? I don't know. I guess they were. I guess because they were rarefied enough, and you know, Tim Hortons kind of took over and yeah. made them terrible. And so now there's room for they started for, mass uh, producing them, and they weren't as good. That's right. Yeah, for for that uh, better donuts and the nostalgia of well, imagine that a real donut. But Donut Monster got their window smashed in last year because of some wayward protesters. So they they got uh, a lot of publicity oh. out of the deal what was and, the uh, protest about well it was it was i guess uh there was a there was a some left-wing activists in town uh-huh uh some people i well i didn't i don't know who was affiliated with the uh the incident but there was a book fair going on uh for uh those can get rowdy. marxist and in, in various really rowdy. yeah exactly really those bookish people are oh yeah absolutely they're sitting on a lot yeah and, and so a lot there stuff. was a there was a there was a well-attended communist book fair in town and uh, and some some folks uh, off of that book fair went wandering up Lock Street and and smashed a bunch of windows wow. to protest the uh, the changes in the city and and there's no you know confirmation on whether they're local activist minded people communist minded people or changes or from in, out of town right changes involving uh, real estate yeah housing hard for lack people, of affordable hard housing hard for people uh, who've been here for a long time yeah uh, to uh, Make ends meet. Some 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 folks are having a hard time. Uh, yeah. Making ends meet because of the the, the the property values skyrocketing, but uh, you know, arguably, you know, not the most of most effective way to get one's point across. But I don't know. People were talking about smashing up a donut store. People are talking about uh, rent increases, and people are talking about donuts. So right, it's uh, it was. Uh, it was a win all around. <laughs> well, when I was coming up as a young man, I, I was a fan of the Sonic Onion label that, yes. is, that is based here in Hamilton. It's a good one. And was, uh, they used to talk about how Hamilton was... They had a song, I think, called Donut Rock City. Okay. And they used to talk about how it was. there's just a lot of donut shops in Hamilton. This was in the 90s. Well, I, I never thought of it as a... Like, I think a lot of a, one particular chain... Of, of course, places there seem to be a lot in Hamilton. Do you, does that resonate with you? We know, yeah, we know we have. We, surely, you know, we have the first uh, ch- chain of the chain that shall not be named. Right, is the first chain was in Hamilton. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, the first, okay. the first, uh, yeah, the first shop, and uh, they've kind of kept it true to its uh, its original uh, architecture for as long as they could stand, and now it's been. Revamped into a shiny double decker, uh, Tim's. Oh, like so, the original, yeah. the original one. I think was they kept here. maybe a, a, a wall in place or mm. a brick from where, the original. Where is it? Or something. It's on Cannon Street. Okay, uh, that's the original one. Yeah, I didn't but know that. Even they don't have the honey stick. No, they probably don't because it makes people's noses right. feel weird. Huh? So okay, so Hamilton is known for uh, donuts. Yes. Steel. Yes. At one point, because there's a big steel factory here. Whoa! That yeah. people knew. And now uh, the marginalization of the the poor. Yeah, that's and, uh, what it's known for. Uh, probably other things. Yeah, I think, and and you, I think of, of you. Things. The Casbah is a good venue. I think of the this ain't Hollywood, uh, Cops Coliseum, which is now something else. I can't remember what it's called. So all places. Yeah, the cops. Yeah, they change the name. The center. 
one of the centers. That shall not be named. Yeah, I don't know what. <laughs> so, so that's what I think. And Dr. Disc in Hamilton, there's like a lot of like a good record store. It used yeah, to be a good, good record store, yeah. There so, are many, there are Dr. Discs in various cities. And I, there used to be one in I've never known if they're all affiliated. I think they are. Or were at one point and then, you know, broke off as independents or there's still one. I, sh- I should know this. I, I don't, don't think there are any more okay. anywhere else. So there might be one in London, Ontario, maybe? Yeah, there's one in London. I know yeah. it's still going. Okay. Well, anyway. I, I think, think of you, too. And I was thinking about you as I was listening to your, your new record, um, which I adore. Thank you for making this record. It's been a while since oh, uh, we've thanks. talked about your music. and But before we get to the record, you exist in my memory banks in a very formative way. Okay. Because we traveled the country together. We sure did. Uh, and I know you've done a lot of tours. You've been across mm-hmm. the con- this country, Canada, yep. many times. Where else have you been to Europe? Yeah, a few times. Uh, yeah, Canada, more times than I care to acknowledge, right. uh, than I could count, but uh, east and west. It's been a while since east, but west coast I make uh, at least once a year. East coast this year I'll be going with Kim Barlow. That'll be fun. Oh, nice. And very shortly, in about a week and a half, I'm heading to Europe for... I guess it'll be my sixth tour over there, but that too, I've uh, I've taken a hiatus uh, until my new album was out, so mm-hmm. it's been about three years, so I'm excited to get back touring with a friend of mine, Marty. Nice. Makala, yeah. But you, uh, you, my, you and I and our friend Matthias, Calm mm-hmm. of the Burning Hell, uh, traveled uh, pretty extensively across, uh, we went west, we left Ontario, and we headed west. In, we did. Was that 2010? I want to say it must have been about that. Yeah, I think it was 2010. And does that tour stick out for you in any ways? What? Which? Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> which, where are you? Was it memorable? Uh, does it stick out as a, a particularly yeah. unique tour? Of course. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was one of my faves. Uh, touring with Matthias and you was. Uh, you know, everyone. I told. I mentioned that to our mutual friends. I mentioned that to thought we'd kill each other. And, uh, oh, before just, we left? They were a while on the road because oh. of the stresses of, you know, the tumult, but the right. tumult, but it was uh, one of my most, it was it was pretty smooth sailing, all I told. I don't really and remember, I mean, no we, major calamities. we didn't have any, uh, yeah. I was working at the time simultaneously, that I felt was bad, I, you, I regret that, because I, I was trying to do my work for the CBC radio and, and record things every day and then upload them and we would be in these remote places that didn't have internet yeah and so it was very complicated to do a web radio show on the road more complicated it was than the last time i did it when i was in america where there's plentiful yeah. wi-fi and um so that i felt bad about but i don't think we had any interpersonal strife we no. had we had some issues with other people <laughs> and like <laughs> a, at least one city oh, yeah, okay. one venue told us we couldn't play yeah and that, that was weird that was a strange one we just uh Clearly bailing on the show. Yeah. Uh, but so other than that, the shows went well. The, uh, they were really the great. camaraderie held yes. throughout. I think it only grew. Yes, I agree. The, and then and I think at Winnipeg, uh, Matthias had to head off because he was meeting the band in Germany. And That's right. That was on the right way before back. he moved there. So he was flying to, to Europe, and we toured back the That's last right. three or four shows on our own. That's right. On the way back, so we did a weird thing where, well, I thought it was odd, but yeah. I trusted you because you've done this before, but we, <laughs> we toured a bunch of cities, like we played like Sudbury and Thunder Bay and uh, Winnipeg on the way out west, yeah. and then within a week or two, we came back and played some of those same cities again. Yeah. A little bit unusual. Well, yeah, I mean, some, I mean, unless you're going to carve uh, south through the United States, it's uh, a real deal breaker to kind of not do Thunder mm-hmm. Bay twice, I think. And I believe the they're used to the Thunder Bayers, Thunder Bayites, the friends in Thunder Bay. I don't know what are, we call them. Yeah. Seem to... Thunder Bayers not, seems good. Not complain, you know, if you We did the same venue. The venues, yeah. The exact same venue in Thunder Bay. I think Thunder they're Bay. used to that. I think people do that frequently. They must do that all the time. You know, anyway, if you have a place there. It was, it was honestly, you get to do this all the time, and I that was one of my last big excursions. And it's it sticks with me. It was like, what a thing we did. And we went... In your 1992 Honda Accord, <laughs> three full-grown men with their music the equipment bands, and the drum worth of equipment. Whoever sat in the back and it was almost invariably Matthias because I wasn't going to sit back there. I'm six <laughs> two, and that that drum kit of mine would just the, the kick drum would fall on them every time we turned. And yeah, it's unbelievable that we did that, but we saved so much money. Yeah, remember I wanted to rent a van. I was like being the dad. That the Matthias. We should rent a van, guys. We, we should. <laughs> I can get us a deal on a rental van. 
and and you were like, we, uh, no, I don't. With Elias and I had this stupid of idea of just putting a big bag oh, that's of all right. of our stuff on top. On top of the car. And it worked. It, it mostly worked. <laughs> Most, mostly. Oh, no. Do you remember we had the Didn't tarp on top off. of the roof? Okay. On the way to Sudbury or Thunder... Sudbury, remember? Okay. We left and there was a tarp. But the water was all coming into the car. Oh, no, we, I don't We that. tried to tie a rope. We didn't have a plan. Okay. So the rope, we had some stuff on the roof, and we tied it around <laughs> the, the, into the windows. You know, oh like gosh. the rope went through the windows, not the doors. And all the rain, it was pouring rain. It poured from the tarp oh right into the car. You don't remember this. I think I was a napping. We got rid of I the tarp after that. Or I that. just pretended to be asleep to let you guys <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> It's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't remember that. There were so many strange things that went on. And then we played, I, I tell this to people all the time, particularly now, uh, over the summer, there were these horrible, horrible wildfires in British Columbia. Oh. And these, you're tell- yeah. You know, yeah. Were you affected you by this? You thought that was bad. Now it's, it's well, it's worse. Well, we but, went, yeah. I was saying, like, when they would mention some of these remote, supposedly remote places on, on the various islands. Yeah. We had been to them. We oh, played yes. a bunch of those. I just hadn't, like, I was like, oh, yeah. Like, when I, I actually looked back at our itinerary. Yeah. And it was like, we played, like, we played <laughs> something like, except for the canceled one. We played, we played in those played, towns. Now they're gone. Well, we played, like, 27 shows in 28 days or something. Yes. But that was what we were scheduled to do. And 14 of them were in British Columbia. Yes. All throughout. Where were, do you remember where we, we were, like, Prince, no, where did we play? Weimar? We went to, like, Hornby Island or something yes, like that. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that was the most, that was... Had you done that before? Took some doing. Uh, I'd played there once before, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we got to Victoria and everything, didn't we? Vancouver yeah. Island. Yeah. Vancouver. Courtney. And we, we got up to... Uh, made a seven-inch in Courtney. Were you at the Wells Festival? Did we no, do we didn't. Wells? No, we met those people, but okay. I didn't. You'd done it the year before. Right. But we met them and stayed with them after our Kelowna show didn't happen. Yeah. I yeah, think yeah, that's yeah. what happened. We stayed there. That's and right, on that tour, ting. by the way, you mm. were obsessively making uh, wax candles. Oh, no. Yeah? They were busts of your head. Yeah. That were wax, and you were just everywhere we went that had an oven. You would, you had, what did you have a mold or I something? I wasn't. Don't t- don't make things up. No, that's I true. <laughs> you were making candles. Remember you? Yeah, you, yeah. You, the microwave yeah, that exploded. Was the uh, Paul and Julie almost. Well, that's where we stayed. Was that in Kelowna? Yeah, <laughs> they, were, they were not. They were not thrilled with the, the kitchen. You'd the become this candle film. laboratory, <laughs> and then we blew up a microwave in some hotel. Matthias was out doing something. <laughs> And you were trying to melt the wax in the microwave, and no. he came back, and the glass had exploded. No, I have video evidence of this, by the way. No, it's you on. Don't. It's on YouTube. No, it isn't. Yeah, it, it, it was even back fake then. Fake news. Fake no. news. <laughs> <laughs> so there are just all sorts of weird things, but it and I, it does bring to mind the, the the first time I remember seeing you uh, was very theatrical. I think you used to play. Did you used to play with the drum machines and stuff? Sure. And you would do it. Played with all the things. Oh, you played with lots of different that things. Doesn't would, sound good. You had, no, well, that didn't sound I don't good. Do and that. then you'd have uh, flowers and roses, and like you would, it was very dramatic and melodramatic. Yeah. Where does that stem from, your theatrical bent? Uh, I think I have some you know? perspective on it. Yeah. Now, I'm a grown up. <laughs> I think it's uh, it starts as a bit of a a bit of a you know finding finding a way to be comfortable on stage when you're. You know, a pretty uh, socially, you know, askance or Asperger's person trying to find a way to be comfortable. Is that clinical or is that just your uh, self-assessment? Uh, well, more of a attention deficit. But they're they're finding these these these, these neurological correlates between, you know, various. Uh, anyways, I, I, I found I found a way. To uh, be comfortable on stage, and it involved yeah. entertaining myself as much as, uh, hopefully, other people at times. You didn't want to be boring. Yeah, I didn't want to. You I didn't want. To didn't want to be bored. Bored. Um, and I also. It's nice to. It's nice to. If I if I'm doing something, a uh, field doesn't have a context. I, I think I was. I will and do try to give myself, or forge a context. You know, mm-hmm. when I'm playing and and welcome people into it. And so, um, yeah, it's just things I've become interested in, uh, you know, in terms of the live performance that sometimes frames the music in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a compatible way. And sometimes it's just really alienating, but it's, yeah. it, it keeps it interesting. No, for it was me. always very interesting and, yeah. and fascinating, but, uh, I forget, are you actually from Hamilton originally? Mm. I grew up in Caledonia, which is only a few minutes, 15 minutes south. 
So I think I slurped into the microphone. No, that's okay. I'm eating a, a chocolate peanut covered donut, and, mm. and now the granddad's donut staff is just sort of staring at us, wondering what we're doing. Uh-oh. A few people are staring at us, did you wondering what we're doing. Tell them we were doing a I thing. I told them we were doing a thing. Yeah, okay. yeah. There's always a perception that what we're doing is live. Right. Because I've got headphones and the microphones, and people yeah. are like, where is this being beat? Am I on the radio just by being in the room? You know, and I. I you look I, official. I kind of look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so you grew up in Caledonia. I don't know this much. Uh, I don't know this about you. Like, what okay. was your upbringing like? Were you this area? You know, I was Burlington. Yeah. Did you have like a Joseph you, Brandt? Or where was I born? One of those hospitals. You don't have to. This <laughs> is an interrogation. You don't have to tell That's me. That's a that. bio, you, you asked me. Oh, well, I didn't ask you what hospital you were born in per se. Did I? You're you're probing. I feel I, I feel probed. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I grew up in Caledonia <laughs> and uh, moved to Hamilton, uh, which was the big city growing up. Mm-hmm. Moved to Hamilton for uh, for McMaster. And, oh, uh, so your family stayed in Caledonia and uh, you came to school? My, my mom and I moved. My mom and my brother oh, and I moved okay. into Hamilton. And, okay. And uh, it was, we, had a, we were a nice, happy family and on Queen Street. Oh, nice. Going to school and uh, playing music. When my mom was away for a few months and it became sort of the musical hub for my neck of the woods, friends, uh, my, my oh, friends and friends I would, would practice, come over? Okay. And trash the house, try, and I'd try not to trash the house. We'd cleaned it up before mom got home, mostly. So what got but you into this music? This was when I was like 20. Oh, say this again? Was, what, this was when you were 20, you say? Yeah, when I started, well, I went to art, I went to McMaster, I did some art school stuff, and partway through my art degree, I uh, got uh, pulled into music, I, I just was writing more, getting more opportunities to play out with uh, Golden Lake Diner, an old Sonic Onion band, but also uh, on my own, uh, with my own music, uh, came, you know, became something I, I, I wanted to do, something I got hooked on. Oh, so you were in Golden Lake Diner? Yeah, towards the tail end of their, okay. of their existence. I, was, uh, I filled in for Mark Raymond oh. on bass uh, for the last few tours they did, and uh, we recorded some together. And then Mark uh, became a great friend and collaborator after that he, uh, he, almost, he performs he plays on almost every record that I put out I would have played like you and Mark somewhere didn't Did I? yeah yeah probably there was Pepper after, Jack or yes, something yes after yeah? the Matthias shows or the tour you and I would play odd, the odd show we played in Guelph at Kazoo Fest Yes, of course With we did. With Mark, I think. We got that crazy ticket for not wearing seatbelts or something. That's right. Did we all get that or just me? No, I didn't get it. You got it. You guys were wearing seatbelts. It was, seat it was like 250 bucks. I don't think I was in the car with you. Brutal. I lived in Guelph, right? You would have come down, yeah. Yeah, maybe remember. Mark. Anyways, we, we drove like one block. Are there always incidents with you and the law, legality? Um, I've had, I mostly have it figured out. I mostly have figured out the system. <laughs> These days I sneak by. But you uh, sing about it on the first song on Have a New Name, this new album. You sing on Someone Fix the Game. You talk about all these scrapes you've had with a police officer pulling you over for speeding, uh, a, a customs official letting you slide through with, you know, even though you, you clearly are, are bringing contraband from another <laughs> country into uh, uh, into ours. And um, the, the sort of joke of the song on some level, although I feel like it gets more pointed as the song goes on, mm-hmm. but the joke of the song is that you get away with these things. Everything kind of works itself out for you for some reason. You able-bodied white man that you are. That's right. Things seem to just work themselves out. Um, yeah, and I, I wonder why things haven't gone worse for me, and that's <laughs> uh, one, one, one of a variety of reasons, I think. You know, uh, I, I got lucky in terms of my privilege, but uh, it's allowed me to sneak by with a, some deficits uh, that uh, maybe go below the radar. Uh, whereas uh, if I... Others might have a harder time uh, with, uh, you know, any, any kind of n- neurodivergence if they're, if they're, if, if, if they're targeted for uh, some other reason, yeah, a more yeah. visible reason. Right. And I don't know, that's, I joke about it in the song, but, you know, there's a comical side to it. But as, you know, that's, but that's the point of satire is to say something uh, relevant in, uh, in, in, with humor. Well, are, are you really, though, someone who sees things as, I don't know, 
Like, are you an optimistic person? Do you think that things are ultimately going to be okay? <laughs> I can't tell sometimes because th I think there's a side of you that is very cynical mm -hmm. and critical. But then uh, there's also a side of you that throws caution to the wind and thinks... I'm, I'm actually very specifically right now thinking about the time on the tour when your engine light came on. Mm -hmm. And I, responsible van renting guy that I am, you know, thinking we should go get that fixed. And you kept saying, it'll be fine. It's fine. It happens sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, well, the light is on and we're in the middle of nowhere. Shouldn't we find a garage? It's Sunday. Yeah. What are we going to do here? Like it was an odd light. It hadn't been on the whole time. And you were like, it's going to be fine. And you know what? It was fine. Right. And nothing happened. Like, do you, is there something that informs that? It is a kind of optimism, but it's also, I think, a kind of like, well, We'll deal with it if we have to deal with it. Well, the way you way you retell that as though there was some sort of mystical, you know, luck that kept <laughs> us from being stranded. But right. I think in that particular case, I mean, that happens too. But in this case, it was just I knew I knew that car well enough to right. know I could get seventy six kilometers mm -hmm. with the the. Uh, the light on. The, the, yeah. the, the gas low light on. It wasn't the gas low light. It was a more serious light. Oh, the engine light. It never oh, yeah, went just away. You can, you can ignore those. No, but it never <laughs> went. It was a very specific kind of like you should go. It basically <laughs> the light said you should go to the garage. And, and, and we never did. And you were right. I mean, we made it home. Somehow we made it home. That car is gone now, by the way, I assume. In older Hondas, the <laughs> engine light will. The little, it's true. My the little latch that whatever. Yes. Flick in the engine. It, it, it slips and. Yeah. The engine light goes on. But um, it's funny you say that up until recently, I would have just an incredible amount of anxiety yeah. on these adventures, constantly on these tours, because uh, though, you know, everything does has worked out so far uh, for the best, and I've, I've, I've scraped by out of many kind of predicaments like that and others and worse, I... Uh, there's no reason why it, it should work out. And there's no reason why I should yeah. make it through these things alive. And so, uh, you know, past experience doesn't doesn't uh, make me any more, you know, reticent. Is that the word? Yeah, word? sure. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make me any more reticent about the, the current uh, circumstance. So, so, uh, but, so I, I won't be, I'm not easygoing necessarily, but I, uh, in retrospect, I sort of think, you know that it could have gone much worse it's true why didn't it <laughs> it's true i got two speeding tickets on that trip yeah yeah and and that was bad on that trip and specific Jeez, trip. but i didn't no somehow you didn't i think you know as you know eventually i just started stopped going so fast <laughs> we and were in a rush I, I think when i was yeah. driving and the one time was stupid it was down a giant mountain hill in bc they were just waiting at the bottom of the hill you know you take your foot off the gas to crush right. I wasn't speeding on purpose. It just was like the gravity yeah. was such, and they were just waiting for people like that to, for like me to do that. Jeez. Anyway, it's fine. I'm not. I, this isn't a shakedown for I'll, speeding ticket. Money. Yeah. I just wanted to bring it up because I feel like I. Good. I'm not paying the ticket. There's <laughs> some kind of perspective on you that I'm trying to get here based on all of these jogs down memory lane. But what I wanted to ask actually is, we we fast forwarded from uh, Caledonia to 20 years old playing music with your friends when your mom's away what got you into music Chris I have no idea uh, do you remember yeah just um, writing songs and uh, then friends of mine asking me to, to play in a band learn how to play bass so I'd already been writing songs and playing them out very occasionally but uh, that got me hooked on performing live playing with uh, Golden Lake Diner, but also little things like my friend Corwin Fox calling me when I was 19 out of the blue because someone had given him a cassette of one of my songs and asking me to play a show he was putting on in Ottawa, so I drove six hours to play at uh, Whippet Lounge or the Whipping Post. Whippet Lounge? So, no, Whippet Lounge was, that was in London. London. Yeah, one of the, the Whipping the Post. Whipping Post, okay. Which is now the Cafe de Cuff, if it's still there in okay. Ottawa. I'm sure it is. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, that that kind of throwing caution to the wind and driving six hours for a show Wait, where's to, to see friends. Where's, Corwin? Where is he from? Because we, this yeah, is, we, that's Corwin's right. the fellow we recorded the uh, seven inch single we made. Yes. In, uh, I, was it Courtney? Good, good remembering. Courtney? It was in uh, 
Cumberland. Oh, Cumberland, B- BC, right. Right? Yes. yes. Okay. And yeah. he's still in Cumberland with he's Kirsten Cumberland. And, right. and the kids. Right. They're doing really well. He runs a home studio out of there. Yes. And it's in demand. And Super nice guy. He's actually going he to be around here. He's, uh, oh. He's playing with uh, Rich from Arcade Fire. Richard. Richard oh. Um, what's his name again? Richard Reed Perry. Yeah. He's playing with Richard Reed Perry uh, for his new project. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. So they'll be around. Okay. I haven't uh, caught them live yet, but the music's great. Cool. And... Uh, it gets uh, an excuse for Corin to come to my neck of the woods more How would frequently. Corin, so Richie's in Arcade Fire. How would Corin know Richie? Uh, well, that's their story. I guess. Yeah, that's their. St- they, they used to play in a band, Big Fish, Eat oh, Little right. Fish. Okay. And when I was touring with Golden Lake Diner, we met them in Ottawa. They were playing down the street, and we hung out. Um, so Richie and Corwin were in Big Fish, and sort of kept in touch ever since. Okay. And uh, I think, I think, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and, R- and R- Richie's performed on, on Corwin's records and vice versa all along. So, so it was primarily your friends asking you to play. It wasn't like you saw or heard a musician in particular that spurred you into thinking, I can do this. It was really a social thing? Or did you have like a favorite artist or band when you were a kid? Yeah, uh, it was playing open mic nights and finding that some nights would go very well and some would go horribly well and uh, <laughs> horribly and uh, I would get, kind of get hooked on that on the highs and lows of it mm-hmm. trying to crack the crack the code of communic- what, what what made tonight different from last night why am I communicating so well tonight it's weird isn't it it is weird it yeah. comes and goes and you don't know why it's that magic that uh, that mystery that, that the magical mystery do you find that this <laughs> translates into other aspects of life like, I sometimes will try to tell jokes on a Wednesday and they all bomb. Yeah. But then on a Thursday, I'm, I'm on fire. Like, whoever I deal with is like, ha, ha, ha. I'm like, why am I off and on? What's the difference? Am I too tired? What is going on? And as a musician, you have it, too. Like, you'll be playing. We'll be on tour. Yeah. We'll play a show and uh, it'll go great. We'll all be like, that felt good. Yeah. It sounded good. It felt good. And then the next night, I'll be like, oh, what happened? Like, we didn't know what we were doing. It definitely happens. And I found that over time, the valleys kind of even up a bit. Um, where and that's It's been a 18-year process or whatever of Experience, I trying think, yeah. to, yeah, of trying to uh, find the kind of communication I want uh, on, you know, on stage. I think we start out young consistently. Yeah. We start out young, kind of scrappy, but then at some point we realize we're scrappy, and then your expectations go really too high. Yeah. And then at some point, like you say, the valleys don't seem as deep uh, because I think you're also more psychologically prepared to deal with the fact that it is inconsistent. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you're just like, ah, oh well, or and you know you have to do it again. Yeah. Whereas it's the end of the world when you do it when you're a kid, if you screw something up. That's true. You don't, you don't feel as da- quite as damaged yeah. after you know, having so many bumps. It's like a kid, a baby, the cliche of a kid getting, scraping his elbow being the worst thing they've ever experienced. Right. So naturally they're going to cry their face off, but yeah. eventually uh, uh, one numbs substantially. But it's not a bad thing. I think it's... No. A really fine. quite pleasant yeah. numbing. <laughs> <laughs> so you, when did you emerge as wax mannequin and why did you emerge as wax mannequin? Because uh, uh, when I first s- encountered you, as I sort of alluded to before, like you were this solo artist yeah. that had gained some renown as, as, you know, there was a theatricality. You never, there was, there was antics. There were antics that people were, were coming to expect. But then uh, you started making records with people and there was a band. I've been in your band I would see you playing with... Actually, to be honest, I don't know. Before we played together, I don't know that I ever saw you really play out with a band too much. Okay. I'm trying to think. Like I, When I think of the times I saw you, which were many, yeah. before we started collaborating, uh, I think you were primarily on your own or with like a couple other people. Well, yeah, I think I mostly saw you by yourself. What, what is the oscillation there? I guess part of the logic behind using the moniker, uh, besides it being a bit of a defense, you know, mechanism or trap uh, <laughs> is that uh, yeah it would it lets, allows me to play solo or as a band right which can get confusing because uh, it's nice to know the difference from an audience point of view I guess but maybe even as a promoter as a promoter but I I, <laughs> I liked having a sort of a catch-all name that you know 
wasn't Chris Aidney. Um, and I've always had it in the back of my mind that I may put out another selection of music under the name Chris Aidney, but uh, haven't, so you, got, haven't you, got around to it. You do feel sometimes trapped by being Wax Mannequin? By the, um, by the moniker? By the name? Not lately. I don't, I don't feel trapped by much lately. And uh, I think that just comes with age as well. Just mm. uh, softening of anxiety that yeah. comes through experience. Or, I've been meditating a lot lately. And you that, have? That uh, is very helpful. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I it's great. I think of you as kind of an intense guy. Well, that makes me a, a good meditator. <laughs> yeah, I need to do it too. Because I have, I've been dealing with stuff the last couple of years that I need to deal with. And a few people have told me to meditate. But what, how do you do it? What do you just sit down and Lots cross people. your legs and yeah, that's say it. stuff to that's yourself? That's what you do. Exactly. Is that right? You and got it. What kinds of things do you have to say to yourself? <laughs> do you have to say a mantra? Do you have to... No, I don't, tell do, me specifically. I don't do that. I just breathe and I uh, watch myself breathing. And then if my mind wanders, I'm thinking about something else. I'll notice that. Huh. I'll say, oh, that's, that's an interesting thing to think. I will instead watch my breath again. <laughs> and then that's all, the, that's all there is to it. Huh. And then uh, after a long time, uh, you might have a period of 10 seconds where you notice nothing but your breath. And then uh, a week later, you might have a period where you notice nothing but your breath. And then you stop noticing anything at all but you're fully awake and conscious huh. just your mind is totally empty and you're not noticing anything but you're and you're not thinking i'm not noticing anything you're just a blank slate of consciousness does the, and does sometimes when i'm meditating i come up with my best song ideas but i have it's it's a, an interesting challenge because i have to notice those song ideas and acknowledge that you know sure they might be good ideas but i'm gonna i'm gonna watch my breath again and risk losing those ideas and sometimes I do they just disappear into the ether there's that interest in serenity like you say it can conjure songs but your music has sort of calmed down in recent years maybe it's fair to say like you used to have a more of a some song, some of your songs are like damn near metal like they're, they're really intense rock songs uh, but then you have this other side of you that can be a little more introspective folk oriented so to speak totally intricate totally interesting and sophisticated and i feel like that comes across on on this new record but it's in some level it's a bit more of a low-key affair compared to like some of your more intense driving rock songs i just wonder if there's a connection between your your interest in serenity and meditation and the way you approach songwriting now hmm. i like uh the past three albums have you know, on average, been you know quieter records. You know, Saxon? Mo which, more, which of the more three? acoustic and uh, less uh, yelling. <laughs> <laughs> I said metal, and you winced a little bit. It's, is that wrong? No, okay. mellow. I like I like mellow. No, not mellow. I said metal. Oh, metal. No, I like metal. Okay. I. I'm just trying to wrap my head around that. I think I think uh, I still have a lot of songs where I use my my loud voice, um, but sometimes when I record them, I end up settling on a softer voice yeah. for the recording yeah. um, and certain performance settings. You know, certain settings. Uh, I like ha I like to have the option of of getting a bit bomb bombastic. When we did our tour, yeah. with the three, you, me, and Matthias, we did the bombastic thing, primarily, I would say. Depend it's true. Depending on yeah. the venue, like, have you done many tours or, or uh, played many shows like those ones in mm -hmm. recent years, like where it's like a three-piece rock band kind of thing? Yeah. Playing like Animals Jump and all those kind of... I haven't been playing those old songs as much. Yeah. I've been, um, I feel like I've been writing a lot of new songs, so uh, even since the record's been out, I've I have a, a few, three or four new ones I've been working into the mix, which is important for me because then I get to road test them before I record them. Yeah. I've been working with a fellow David Stein in Guelph to record some demos or some of the new tracks, and some of the demos are coming out so well, I think I just might use them for the next... Oh. And I probably will put something new out in the next uh, month or so just as a, a little... Uh, just to keep myself... You know, isn't this new album only a few months old? Just to keep myself moving. Yeah, but I feel like I've I've enjoyed 
putting this record out so much that I want to do more of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like I've, I've, I've made enough mistakes that I don't care about mistakes anymore and just want to get music out. There was a time when I was pretty freewheeling and, and just blathering all over, you know, music and also the, the, the writing I was doing online before blogs or anything. And then I, I kind of got scared of saying too many things. But What kinds of writing? What kind of writing were you doing? Just, just I had, a, I had a, an email mailing list that I would sort of write you know, pseudo, like sort of quasi uh, magical realism accounts of my tours oh. um, and have sort of you know what? strands I really, yes. that would go through that uh, sounds familiar to me now yeah. sort of narrative things that would happen but I, I, I stopped doing that at a certain point but I feel uh, like those like while I've been making stuff all along uh, it's always been coupled with a, with a lot of anxiety mm. and you know a fear of of getting putting something out or, or fear of whatever response might they be that might might result positive or negative and right uh, that anxiety is kind of, I mean, can't say with anything with certainty, but I feel like I've gotten perspective on on that anxiety that's yeah. kind of haunted me for so long. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm interested in uh, keeping the faucet, keeping, keeping the faucet uncorked, so to speak. Right. Did, did you notice that it's gotten like it's get, so? We got here at it's around getting rowdy. Yeah, yeah. around seven thirty. Yeah, it's uh, what is it? It's almost it's ten after eight now, and it was like fairly quiet. It was, and for some reason, this is like the witching hour for I donut. People. Think it's us? Yeah, I don't know about donut people. I I I know I have I love Granddad's donuts. So yeah, don't get me wrong, but I I haven't hung out in a donut shop in a while, and it's nope. it's got a vibe. There's a culture. It's a culture. It's its own kind of culture. Yeah. And you were saying you don't come to this end of town too much. Yeah. What end of town is this? The north end? Technically? Yeah, it would, yeah I would say it's the north end. Okay. And it's just down from the St. Hollywood. Right. Just Which over is there. Fine. Yeah. We played a show there together. Yes. Before the tour started, we played a little show. Yes. And I don't think Matthias was there. It was somebody who might have been Mark. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, With sorry. The flowers. That's, that's right. That's right. Uh, Chris uh, Harrison was doing some film thing there the night before, a, a, a film shoot. Uh, oh, a director okay. friend of mine, and he left all the flowers. <laughs> For us, <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was, it was perfect. Great, great times. So this this new record, uh, my my family and I have been listening to uh, have a new name, and okay. um, I certainly have some some questions about some of these songs. And I've, I've broached at least someone fixed the game. We were talking about luck and and privilege mm-hmm. uh, earlier, um, but basketball. I want to ask you about basketball. I'm a big fan of basketball you do like the sport don't i you? love yeah. basketball i knew this about you. i yeah, can't I heard this. tell if your song about basketball correct me if i'm wrong i'm going to try to remember this because i've been listening to it a lot and it's a it's quite a repetitive song mm-hmm. uh basketball oh i'm already stumbling around the, upon the lyrics but i will get this i think basketball I'm g- go ahead you i'm do gonna it. let you do this you That's want me to try to figure this out say. okay <laughs> basket is a game no, good game a good game basketball is a good game if you want to win a trophy you could win a trophy if you could win a trophy no no but if, no, if, you, if you want to it win is a, a trophy, good game for that that's if right if you want to win a trophy you're right but if correct you're, but if you're bad at basketball what then you can try, try, and you'll uh-huh. get better. Ah. Is that right? That's true. <laughs> That's the lyric, right? <laughs> you say this a, a million times in this song, and it became, as it goes on, and you listen to the record as many... I'm sorry I bumbled it, by the way. That's okay. But I've listened to it so many times now that basketball has become this philosophical thing for me. Like okay. the song, not yes, the game. Well, no. the game has always been a little philosophical for All me, right. but... This song seems to have some kind of bent to it. It has mm-hmm. like an existential point to it. Uh oh. What are you trying to say with this song? Does it does it apply to more than simply the sport of basketball? Oh, I don't know. It could. I it depends on on how thinly you spread it. 
there's <laughs> something going on with that song and and uh i it, it won't escape me and i i just wonder what it all means it's to the point of madness okay why no other lyrics in the song and is there a kids choir is that your kids who's that that's uh a Earth, Wind, and Choir. It's a, a, Ham- a Hamilton-based uh, choir led by Annie Shaw and uh, Sarah Good, okay. two of my favorite musicians in town uh, who uh, have a, a whole bunch of friends, also really wonderful people okay. that I've known for years, most of them, all of them, and uh, they agreed to come and sing uh, some of the songs. Uh, I think they sing on Boring as well. And, uh, and Boring is another... People can change. Boring is a, a song my son is... Afraid he of? He said he was afraid of it. Yeah, I texted. Was I afraid sent you a message. No, I it's think okay he, he doesn't like. He it. said he didn't I hate like it. it. He said that. Okay, that's he said fine. it. Papa, I hate this song. Good. I'm like, Levon, you can't hate things. Why do you hate it? He's like, I can't. I don't know, but I know that when something, when he's scared of something, yeah. he says he hates it. Okay, that's another. Like, if there's no obvious reason why he would hate something, it, it could be a bad song. It's not a bad song. <laughs> it is a frightening song because there's all the spooky verses and then it's a, bit, a, it's a, a bit group of spooky macabre. voices. Yes, <laughs> saying bull. Boring, boring. So he, uh, and I, maybe he's concerned that he's boring. What's he, what's, what is it? Do you do Halloween? Does he like yes, spooky no, things? No, he hates it. Or I mean, he likes it, but he, he's scared of everything. If we go to a grocery okay. store, he doesn't wear it. the spooky costumes. Well, like we were try- I, was trying to, I was trying to say, if when you become the thing oh, yeah. that yeah. you're afraid of, right. it'll be much better. And he hasn't. He's not ready for that. Well, he <laughs> says he's going to be a bat or something. I haven't figured it out. That's spooky. Is there That's an good. overarching thing going on on this record that you can talk about? I mean, I know I picked out a couple of things, but do you, uh, do you have a sense oh, of what have a new name even means? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, nothing too concrete, <laughs> didactic, whatever. It's uh, mostly. Is it, is it a coherent? Uh, well, they, there's a lot of there's a lot about you know identity on here and changing identity and uh, knowing thine self. Is this informed, I assume it's informed by all aspects of your life. In particular, is it informed by your fatherhood? Oh, well... Your being a father, I, I mean? Oh, my being a father. Um, a couple of the songs, certainly. Um, Just watching people, can people change. Well, my son, my yeah. son uh, came up when he was a toddler. He was just learning to speak. He said, I was humming the tune for People Can Change. And I thought he said, people can change. But he was actually talking about... Something else, um, but uh, what so he, he helped me about? name Chris, that. Chris, he, what was he talking about? You can't just leave uh, us hanging like well, that. In the longest hour, there's. Uh, <laughs> I was changing his diaper. And, I see. Uh, the longest change. hour is you know, <laughs> the longest hour is about uh, uh, someone who wanders you know for no particular reason, uh, for far too long, and sort of wrecks wrecks his life doing it. And I sort of, you know, is. It's kind of my d- darkest fear of touring, uh, sort of condensed into song. So that's a bit of a heavy one. Yeah, but it's heavy and it's it's a real, uh, it's a longer song actually on the record too. It's uh, it's, it's, it's it's a more haunting <laughs> Aptly song. Aptly named. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. So so that some of it is like I'll, I'll I'll take an idea or a thing I'm working on in life and then imagine the worst part po- or most the, the worst possible like. The worst possible outcome, or just, you know, if you're having a relationship argument or something, you just, you know, think of, think of the the end game. You know, this is what I <laughs> these unrealistic sort of paranoid uh, uh, end game that isn't real, never comes to be. But writing a song about it, where you know, someone wanders away and never comes back, it sort of exercises it from from the system. You do have this cynicism. You do have this fear. You do have this anxiety. It's in. It's within you. But I kind of exercise it in the song, so right. uh, to 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 bring joy, yes. in order to, to 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 bring catharsis or something. Yeah. You know, that's what a lot of music is about. Doing that, singing about awful things, so 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 everyone make, feels happy. Well, I mean, you have you have people can change here, which you know. Yeah, it's, it's a happy number. It's. It is kind of. It has a certain optimism. Uh, and it's a bit evasive. You, you mentioned identity stuff, and we're at an age. You and I, I think we we discovered on that tour as well that uh, we were the three of us were the same age on that tour. Right. Uh, we were all around the same. So I'm 40. You're 
40 now, or you will be if you haven't. Are you more? 41. Oh, are you 41? Yeah. I will be 41 in a couple in a couple months. Okay. Well, fine. Good, good job. We're the same. Uh, yeah. We're kind of the same. <laughs> kind so, of. <laughs> so this is an age where we start to think about such things. We're in the middle, I feel, of, of, of uh, our parents are maybe getting older. Yeah. Uh, the, the, we wonder what we're doing with ourselves. Our kids are growing up, so we're seeing versions of ourselves come up. That's it's true. That's the best part. You're seeing your parents kind of on the decline. That's uh, true. And then your kids are on the way up, and, yeah. it's a weird, and you're in the middle. And, uh, and then you, your, your mind can shift a little bit because of the weight of that, even if you don't think about it too much. So I just wonder if yeah. it's a, heavy, a lot of heavy stuff, but I feel like some of that is in here. Yeah. I, I never, you know... Not in so many words, or in too many words, maybe. Yes, uh, you know, it's a, it's about identity, and that's a, the, hence the name of the record. Have a new name. It, it, the, the idea of people going through something and coming out different, or worse, or better, or dead. The song uh, "Boring" that we've talked about, mm-hmm. I feel like, is your assertion that living a bit of an edgier life is not. It, I mean, it's interesting. Yeah, a straight the straight and narrow is not as interesting. And that's I true. Think that's a little bit of a not self defense, but I think I feel like you you and I, given the some of the paths we've chosen, some of the things we do are pretty normal, mm-hmm. pretty conventional. But we also have this side of us that does stuff that most people don't do, or that's wouldn't, true. wouldn't stay up to do, or wouldn't want to do, and or try to do. And yeah. I think there's a bit of when you get to this age and you've been doing that. Yeah. I think you look at some of your peers and you're like, well, maybe I should have gone to law school. Maybe right. I should have. Maybe I, if I'd only listened to that guy, maybe I would have been in that band or what? Like, I mean, it's either way. You start to think about success, I think, in a weird way or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I no, just it's I, I know what you mean, but it's also like I feel really lucky that I have both sides or an, I, I was going to say the escape route, but it's not an escape route. It's a uh, it's like. I know what I know outside of my family I know what makes me truly happy yes, like exactly. having a family makes me truly happy it does yeah. going to work every day well I love my job but I can see how doing that and having a certain veil or playing a part you know day after day could make some people yeah deeply anxious or depressed and they might not realize why they're deeply anxious or depressed uh, they may have not found a thing that they love to do more than anything else and so yeah. that's kind of while on one hand I agree with you there's, there's that well what if I'd done things differently I, I think it's it's incredibly like the creative friends of mine uh, everyone I meet who's got an, uh, who makes things I think uh, well can't stop but yeah, it's, it's also an has impulse. A, has it's a, a creative impulse yeah, it's a creative it's impulse really but there's a reason it's a, yeah. it's a, it's, it helps keep people you know, it helps keep people functional. It certainly helps helps me function in in that other world, in in you know, yeah. in a more structured way, in a more structured world. It keeps me you need to be grounded fulfilled. Yeah. and keeps perspective. Uh, and that's kind of what I was writing about that's with a bunch th- of these songs. That's what I kind of thought. Hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean to make you admit all your the facts here. I feel like it, this has become an interrogation, but I feel like that's that's what I was hearing in some of these songs. Well. I've been writing about along those lines a bit more, mm. and I'm pretty excited about the uh, the poppy tunes that I'm that I'm uh, working on these days. Though, the, but I'll warn: there is some yelling, <laughs> 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 and there's some quiet strumming as well. Um, these are the David Stein recordings you were alluding yeah, to? Yeah, the ones okay. I'm working on. Okay. Uh, so when will we see the... Did you say next month? In a month or two, I'll, 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 I'll mark my words. I will have, uh, I'll, put a, I'll, I'll put a thing, I'll, I'll put an outward-facing thing Okay. Uh, to uh, kind of test the waters on, on some, of the, some of the new recordings. That's great. So I want to keep, you know, kind of want to keep making stuff. No, man, you should. I, I think that's great. And then you've got tour dates... Uh, Starting when exactly did you say they're coming up? I'm heading. I'm heading to uh, Frankfurt on the 19th of October. I'm doing a, yeah, I'm doing a two and a half week tour with Marty Mekela over there, uh, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, something else, <laughs> and then I'm coming back to buzz around Ontario for quite a bit. 
and, and, and then we're, uh, Kim Barlow and I are working on right. an East Coast Ontario thing in ma- March. Okay. So, uh, yeah, things are in the pipe. It's, uh, it's busy, but it's, it's good busy. And where can people go to learn more about you, the people listening? I mean, not the people at Granddad's Donuts, although I feel like some of them are listening to us right now, too. They're listening. They can go, yeah. Uh. That's fine. They can listen. We're talking. They can listen. It's fine. Yeah. But where, where are the people listening to the show as well? Where can they go on the internet or, or uh, On the internet. Yeah, my website, .com, waxmanikin.com. Yeah. And I've, uh, I was so close to, I was very close to getting off Facebook entirely, but then I went, like, Whole, whole hog in and I've got a Facebook page right. that one can like right if you still if that's I think I like yeah you and I just it. and it just started yeah. doing Instagram and I started starting to pick, take pictures of old ruined houses and factories which is a, a secret passion of mine as I'm traveling around I like oh, looking okay. at you know wrecked buildings so I'm trying to use Instagram for its intended purposes of you know Inst- instantly gramming rights, things. Right. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> okay. Cool. Um, well, that's that all sounds good. Is there a song from Twitter. this this record? Oh yeah, you're on Twitter. <laughs> or were, you, were you gonna say? Oh, Coke's records too. You should. I, oh, that's okay. what I should have said first because I'm really thrilled to be working with Ray and Ray Spoon. Yeah, and all of my other friends on Coke's who are there's so many like-minded uh, strangers on there that have. Uh, collaborated in different ways over the years okay and it just feels like a, a real homecoming uh we just did a one of those conferences folk music ontario which yeah. are normally terrifying but w- the fact we, a bunch of us did it together we felt like a uh, a team that's <laughs> a gang x coax records okay yeah coax records yeah yeah com maybe or some people can find it on the yes on indeed the internet okay is there a song from have a new name that we can play for people if you could pick one thing gosh hmm well, it's hard to pick one. I guess we'll just just do that one. Do you want to do the first one? Well, is sure. Sure. You want sure. To do we so talked. We mentioned that one. Well, so. we we mentioned a few of them. That's why it's we did anything really. But then, why don't we do one we haven't mentioned? Sure. That makes more sense. Which one do you think we should do? Mm. How mm. about? Well, this we did talk about a bunch of these. Is that one? How about quickening? Okay. Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> you pick whatever you want. Okay, this we one we didn't mention. It's it's kind of kind of. Which one are you pointing at there? This gold bridal. Okay, sure. Why that one? Sure. I don't know. It's just because we didn't talk Cause about we didn't it. Talk or about it. Are you playing this one? Are you going to play this one live? Sometimes I do. Okay. Yeah, it's fun to play. It's a lot of words though, so I try to remember them all. It's an interesting name. Where did it come from? Scold's uh, bridal. Just, just. No, you don't. You don't. Have, oh. you, you pressed onto my phone. Sorry. I just wanted to. Now thought, everyone's going to hear our song. Oh, that maybe that one. The longest. Play that one. Can okay. you play that one? We'll play longest hour. Longest hour. Sure. Okay. That was more intense than I thought it would be. But let's. I mean, the the picking of the, the song. The picking of the song. Yeah, the I, interview. I do that or the conversation was was really fun. I make things I, I, <laughs> un, un, unnecessarily <laughs> awkward's not the word, but. Maybe that too. No, it's fine. We've traveled together. I know yeah. what it's like, you know and you know happens. what I'm like. It's it's the same. It's yeah. uh, it's it's like the odd couple, but it works somehow. Yeah. yeah. This is longest hour by Wax Mannequin from Have a New Name. Chris, thank you so much for uh, the time and for meeting me at Granddad's Donuts, and thanks to everyone here at Granddad's Donuts for having us. And I hope you enjoyed your donut, and I hope we talk again soon. And, and best of luck with everything. Thank you, gr- thank you, Granddad. Thank you, Granddad. No, thank not you, Granddad. Vish. I'm Vish. Yeah. Sorry. Don't yes. call me Granddad. That's what I meant. <laughs> Walking early, morning's coast Silent moving through the house When she stirs, he whispers low love I'll walk in, I will go To see the sun rise over town Hear the river's blowing sound There's something else not so sure, but I'll be gone and out no more.
muscle blood Seen you pull something gnawing to be known Leaning close to kiss her last baby boy Sleeping fast Pack no clothes those he wears it Takes no coin It takes no care Clearing leaves The mail has come Breaking bread But then he's gone You're forgetting something Is everybody Forgetting something From the river Rushing quick Pulls a black stone Cool snake Wanders with it Edge of town Muted will To turn around Pops a train The province long But where he goes No way she's wrong All she does Is roll again The boy's wicked Without him Is he forgetting something? Is everybody Forgetting something? The longest hour You've ever spent The darkest hair You've ever dealt The deepest grief you never felt Seven. 
everybody Forgetting something The longest hour you've ever spent The darkest man you've ever done The deepest grief you never felt A hungry heart will lead itself The longest hour you've ever lived The deepest thrill that's ever seen is no joy, no life doesn't have the second slowly break you down. Think of those to have an old silver world, peace or you roam too far, too wild The hours and months, the winter's miles There's a blank inside the mind A restless calm, an earnest light The stones are pulled, the pit is like The wildest nation, the deepest dead There's a story, story told Keep us hollow men off the road My boy is sleeping in my arms A girl's garden in the yard A sounding stone, a thing unseen A steady tone, a sound for me Hunger grows and days go dim Our longest hour come again Special thanks again to my good old friend Chris Aidney, a.k.a. Wax Mannequin, for appearing on this, the 438th episode of Creative Control, which is part of the Entertainment One Podcast Network and is available on all iOS and Android platforms, and also on things like Spotify, YouTube, and Audio Boom as well. If you can't find an episode that you're looking for on any of those platforms, or if you want to learn more about me and sign up for my regularly scheduled newsletter, please visit my website, vishkana.com. You can like Creative Control on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Vish Creative, or follow me at Vish Khanna. Listen to a radio show version of Creative Control on Wednesdays at noon Eastern Standard Time. Around the world at CFRU.ca or on an actual radio at 93.3 FM if you're in or near Guelph. Also, please visit Patreon.com slash Creative Control to make a flexible monthly donation, pledge, and uh, you can support the show that way if, uh, if you feel like it. That would be helpful. Please do. Any amount will do. $5 a month, $1 a month, $45,000 a month. Whatever you can afford and feel like pledging, patreon.com slash creative control. Thanks again to Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf, Planet Bean Coffee, and Granddad's Donuts for their in-kind support of this show. Thanks, too, to my friend Jim Guthrie. Uh, for letting me use uh, his song The Rest Is Yet To Come each and every week on the program. You can learn more about Jim at jimguthrie.org and thank you so much for listening to this show and telling your friends to do the same and subscribing to the podcast. It uh, means a lot. I have to go but I will be back soon. I will talk to you before you even know I'm gone. I bet or something. Okay, bye for now. <laughs> <laughs>